or use the religious institution to try to come in, intervene in this matter. Because in everything they're doing, both Shikau and Albanari are both saying that they are practicing Islam. And we know that is not Islam. Islam is not a religion of just killing people, it's a religion of peace. So how do we use that? How do we communicate the proper you know, religion and communicate the proper ethics and ethos of that religion to the people. Because if not, you're going to have a situation whereby an al Bernawi, who is a child of Muhammad Yusuf, wants to still carry out, you know, attacks and killings. So we may have to still carry on a bit of kinetic, you know, military pressure, but let's start trying to figure out how we can use other means try to start using, you know, seeing how we can get religious leaders in there to start preaching the proper to change message the narrative. to the people. How, how do you get the narrative into that terrain? It's very important. It's the mental, it's the thinking, and it's completely warped right now. But then if that's all you're exposed to, we're only going to see it continue. What you're going to see is some children, because we know by now Shikao surely has some children, and you're going to see some children of Shikao growing up and saying they want to carry on with their father's legacy. You know, the other thing that people find tough well, uh, to come said. to terms with. Okay, I think my colleague Mark Bell likes to bring a question in. Go ahead, Mark Bell. Yeah, from all that you said, there's obviously a lot to analyze from the video. I mean, for instance, some people will say that uh, uh, this time around, they were careful to put a background up, so it's very difficult to get where exactly it is that they were, maybe in a forest, maybe in a room. It looked like it was outside, but it's definitely very difficult. But looking at, uh, looking at that video you know, in more in detail, just wondering what do you think of the military's action to declare three people one in connection with that video and spreading propaganda for Boko Haram. Okay, so that really is not, I don't think, is actually yeah. the right way to go. Um, because journalists, you guys have your, um, there's like a safety thing you have, you don't have to reveal your sources and things like that. And so the military instead should try to figure out how to work with the journalist who they were declaring wanted and you know the other lady it's not by coming out and declaring oh you now you're wanted and making them seem as if they are part of Boko Haram they're not he received the video via email or however he received it and you know he did what any journalist would do he spread it out there how come the military didn't declare CNN you know wanted after or the lady whoever got the other video the last time we saw the Chibok girls so it's a bit of a double standard going on here you see a little bit of disrespect you know you can't just disrespect the journalists because they're Nigerian or the other person and say, well, that's why we're going to declare them wanted. Um, that's not the proper way to go about it. Yes, they do need the information from this journalist and from the other lady. And personally, I would think the best way to go about it, be a bit more diplomatic. Use a bit more back channel, speak with this guy and see how you can really work with him instead. Before now, is it possible that the, the military institution or the security agencies didn't know about al -Banawi. Oh, there's so much information about al -Banawi. Okay, the question, the question is, how is it that if we had that intelligence about al -Banawi, that his existence and other children of mm -hmm. Muhammad Yusuf, that, mm -hmm. that may be, how is it that it wasn't used, I mean, to have him in captivity already, I think hold him and still get more information. What other intelligence is there out there okay. that can be used to ensure that we change the story completely okay well you know there's so many other things that need to happen first of all we have identified that the military really hasn't been able to penetrate communications um, with these people I mean look at Shekau releasing a you know audio and this guy is releasing the response and all this communication is flying back and forth and at which point is the military intercepting, either figuring out who the couriers are or figuring out from what region the communication is emanating from. You know, there, there's so many things that the intelligence agencies really are supposed to be on top of. And, you know, if there's one thing we figured out right now is that, unfortunately, I don't know if it's maybe lack of resources, you know, I'm, because the military is really stretched out right now. I'm sure you guys are aware, right? They're in Niger State, Ondo State, Lagos State, Ogun State. I mean, they're fighting battles and putting out fires all across Nigeria. So it makes you wonder how, you know, how much resources do they really have? Is that part of the reason why they haven't been as effective in really tracking down these key personalities? 
So, I mean, there's another thing too, biometrics. Well, now, if we're hearing that, you know, Bauchi, for instance, had yeah. said, you know, they believe some Boko Haram members are fleeing from Bauchi, I mean, from uh, San Pisa Forest into Bauchi, and that was what one of the senators had said last week. And what you're seeing is that if these fighters start dispersing, because they are feeling the pressure, there's food shortages going on there. I mean, things are really bad in the, in the Northeast. But if they're fleeing, how is Nigeria, how is the Nigerian government actually tracking the identities of even a you and me? I mean, can I put my fingerprint anywhere right now? and they figure out exactly who I am. If they arrest a criminal, we see it all the time, right? They're arresting pirates, they're arresting kidnappers. Are they being enrolled in some kind of database somewhere? So I don't, you know, is the government really even able to track Nigerians? A lot of times things happen and they say, oh, it's not Nigerian, it's people from Benin Republic. Oh, these pirates are from, you know, Cameroon and so on. But then they don't know really who we all are. So that's part of the issue as well, is how are they able to track biometrically track individuals so that if a person who, you know, was in the Northeast and then decides he's going to flee to another state, do we have those measures in place to figure mm -hmm. them out? And you know, this new video, do you think that uh, much as yes, it raises a lot of questions, do you think it then punctures that impression that people have that the military uh, is succeeding with this war against Boko Haram? You know, I believe even Buhari had said when he first um, you know, took office, and he said that finding the Chibok girls really is that yardstick um, in terms of the success <coughs> of of, of uh, tackling Boko Haram. You have to give it to the military, though. When last did you hear about a bomb blast? Exactly. Mm. So, at least in that aspect, you can see that they have made quite, you know, some success in that. We haven't heard about bomb blasts. It used to be a daily occurrence before. So you can tell that they have been, they have succeeded in cutting off a lot of resources, you know, in terms of um, IED components and so on to Boko Haram. That's fine. But have they actually been able to find the key personalities, including the leadership, which is Shikau and even Al Bernari, like you're saying? Have they been able to find the Chibok girls, figure out where they are? Have they been able to penetrate? Some piece that into those locations where uh, Chicago supposedly has an empire and a house and you know is 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 there with all his wives, you know quote unquote. So th there's still some lapses. I mean, there's still a lot of improvement that the military has to make. They have made progress. We have to give it to them, and just simply because those attacks are not reoccurring. But in terms of penetrating, they yeah. still have a way to go. Marque. A lot of the intelligence that you've been analyzing has come from Alban Alwi's um, interview. How seriously or how heavy uh, can, we really, can we really rely on it? Or do you think it's another propaganda to divert us from some of the things that could actually be happening? Well, you know, one of the things was when the um, faction, when it happened, mm -hmm. remember back in June, I believe, or July, um, there was a military, uh, U.S. military uh, commander, I believe yeah. the one for Africa incoming, mm -hmm. and he had said, you know, during his Senate hearing or something, that um, there was a faction, there, you know, there was, there was a bit of a rift going on, and it was happening because Shekau was still using children um, as suicide bombers, you know, things like that, and ISIS just, you know, wasn't all about that and said, look, Shekau, we think you need to stop that. But then he, he didn't, you know, he still continued doing what he was doing. So even back then, the military commander had said it. So when this situation happened and when they were releasing these reports, when um, Albanari, ISIS released theirs, Albanari released his, Shikara released his, it pretty much brought what we kind of already knew um, out to the surface. So it confirmed a lot of things. So what we're seeing is that the um, reports, so the audio messages and so on from Albanari and from Shikau are actually confirming a lot of information that sort of, you know, the intelligence agencies, I would hope anyway, but what they already knew. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of the reason why you have to really even look into what he's saying and, and at least it holds a bit of cloud. It gives a bit of insider information. Take what he's saying all that information that he's given out in his um, reaction to um, Shakao and tied to steps to working more with the people on ground, with the communities, with those resident around there. Can that help to make any difference in this? You know, 
You know, uh, Bernawi now, you know, from what he said about, you know, attacking only churches, he seems to want to stop attacking Muslims. And so what some analysts are fearing is that that may actually encourage um, some support once again. You know, if, if he comes out as if, oh, you know, we're not going to attack mosques anymore, we're not going to attack the locals. So, you know, he, they may start getting support. And so that's one of the fears that, that we have. And that's why it's important that in addition to kinetic attacks that the military is doing, they need to figure out other, you know, non-kinetic means of really penetrating the people. Let them know, look, this is really what Islam is. You're not supposed to just attack churches and, and people in authority, which is security forces, barracks. That's not what it's about. We are a religion of peace. This is how we go about our lives and so on. So in, in terms of you know, what you asked, they, those are some of the other you know, means that they're supposed to try to use to prevent you know, the spread of this thing. You know, one of the ways that some, you know, we also believe that this may play into the military's hand has to do with, you know, they may start attacking each other. You know, Albanari and Chicago, since now we have two different yeah. um, entities, so. Well, it must be pretty hard for uh, the families, especially when you identify your daughter after what, over two years. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Well, Tawa Ashiru is a former U.S. Air Force intelligence analyst and also counter-improvised explosive device analyst. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment. We have a lot to do on this matter, so don't go away.